<laughs> um, it's an FSM machine. It's microcurrent. Uh, doesn't really shock, but it, it gets. Get yeah, it gets. It does what it's supposed to do. Uh, cast is good. My arm, I feel getting smaller. I feel like I'm slipping out of the cast every day, but no, it feels good. No pain. Um, surgery well. Uh, recovery's been really good. Um, starting to lift and do things with my leg and legs and other my core and other stuffs. Um, trying to figure out ways to still do some upper body lifts as well and keep me stay in some type of shape for sure. How did the process go with the I uh, was mutual between us. I mean, obviously, Tommy and Ted, they always have a, you know, players first mentality as to, you know, what we do with our bodies. And um, they were always OK with whatever decision, you know, I decided to make. But uh, I got to the point to where I just I just couldn't do anything basketball wise that I was comfortable with doing. Um, and I'd rather fix it now than worry about it, you know, later or hinder it more throughout the year and be out later in the year and kind of hinder us that way. So just want to get it fixed, get back as quickly as possible, put it behind me. Are you handling the disappointment not being able to play? Uh, it's tough. It is tough because uh, you guys know I, I always, if it ain't broke, I'm out there. But, I mean, I got to – the cast is it's keeping me from, from being out there now. But um, it's, it's definitely tough because I, I definitely want to be out there. You know, I know – uh, what I can do and I know how valuable I am to the team and um, and I know I can help for sure you know it's definitely frustrating at times especially on the road I don't always travel to every road game but at times you know when you watch it on TV and you watch it in person you get a totally different perspective and uh, there's some great times and there's, there's some there's some challenging frustrating times to watch too it's always challenging to watch you took the charge in Memphis at the time that you know something was wrong or was it kind of like the adrenaline just set in uh I knew something was wrong. Uh, you see, I just kind of sat there for a minute and paused. And my wrist kind of went numb for a minute. I didn't, couldn't feel it. Um, then I just shook it off and finished the game. And it was weird because before that, it, I had some little irritation in there. It wasn't hindering me from playing. Um, but I had literally told our team, like our docs and my trainers, that I want to get it looked at preliminarily. Um, and then sure enough, we had Memphis game and it, it it happened and uh, granted x-rays came back negative and MRIs and everything else came back showing something different. But um, I knew then it was some, some bad in a way. Yeah. What does the calendar look like for you kind of moving forward, cast off, being able to dribble, being able to kind of get back to you? Uh, so I'm in this cast for another seven weeks. So 10 total, which it's gruesome. It definitely doesn't doesn't feel as good as it as it sounds either. They both are bad. Uh, but seven more weeks in this, um, then probably another three weeks after that, um, out of the cast to be able to get back to normal range of motion, a little strengthening and stuff. So, what do you make of your season individually, given that you're sample size? Yeah, that's the frustrating part because I know I had so many more games left to. To do well, so I can't. It's I can't really, can't really put a, a judge on it, you know, because it's kind of an incomplete, you know, it's an incomplete year, incomplete assignment in a way. Um, you know, I just it's it's definitely frustrating, but you know, um, I definitely knew I could have finished out the year on a strong note. I definitely feel like I could have helped contribute in a lot of ways. My biggest thing wasn't necessarily me individually. It was where could we be as a team, you know. Um, where could I lead us as a team? Where could we be? Uh, and I knew, I know for sure if I play, we, we can be in a position we want to be in. Um, but it's still possible. And it's still, we're still in, inside of that too. So, uh, you know, I kind of take on a new perspective in a leadership role and, and constantly being around, constantly uh, trying to give my input. But it is, uh, individuals that had up and down year. I, you know me, I'm always my toughest critic, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, Kick myself right now. I'm, not, I'm already down. So. <laughs> Brad, the trade deadline. I mean, must, you must have been like right out of surgery and still Yeah, it was. <laughs> what was what were those things like? Because obviously, usually, you know, instead of so many times you can comment, you can have a conversation or you know, check in with you. Yeah, the timing of it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, 
but before I went into surgery, you know, Shep kind of gave me a like a master plan of kind of what today would possibly be, you know, um, things he was looking at, guys potentially on the move or whatever. Um, so he kept me informed, but I, honestly, I didn't. When I came out of surgery, I woke up and was like, "What? What the? What the hell happened?" You know, so uh, it was crazy. It was. It was definitely. It was crazy. Um, you know, to be able to see what Shep did and be able to get KP back out of that, out of the deal, and get Ish back. You know, guy who's who's been here, who knows, you know, what DC is about, knows how to play. Um, then just got our boy Saddle back too. But the deadline in itself was was crazy. I would say. We we want do you definitely want to see him play? Obviously, we want him healthy. Um, that's first and foremost, and making sure he's 100 percent before he steps out there. Uh, but I really think he can be he can be really exceptional for us. Like we're huge now in a way. Like the, it's crazy to think. I look at him and he's seven four. Is it is he's a whole foot taller than me. Like that is <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. You know. <laughs> on no level but it is it is remarkable to be able to see his size and then watch him in practice watch him before you know work out before games working out uh his skill set his his touch his ability to be able to shoot the ball um but then when i talk to him he says he likes playing in the post you know i think that's kind of a misconception people have about him that he just loves to shoot threes loves to be on the perimeter but he told me he loves to be in the post he loves to he loves to be physical down there so i love that you know i'm excited to see that um and just imagine him and Gaff out there, you know, just that is that's gonna be sick. And then you got Kuz who's six nine, six ten. You know, so we have we have great size. I'm I'm excited about that. We have we've never had that. We've never had that. Do you feel like the league is kind of changing seeing what Cleveland did with three seven footers out there? Now all of a sudden it seems like you know, I don't want to say I didn't want to throw them out there, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a, it's a great comparison because I mean they they're doing it now. They got three of them. They got three. They got three footers. They got three footers, and they utilize them all very well. And that's. I think that's that's a trend. You know, um, it's not necessarily the the big bruisers. You know, Embiid and Jokic. Those are those are unicorns. You're not gonna see too many too many big bruisers in the game today. But now you got you got athletic footers who can spread the floor, who can do multiple things on the floor. It's, it's just that's the, that's the way to lead. You know, it's definitely transitioning in a way. I'm happy. Happy to see us on the forefront, but we definitely we got to make it work for sure. What are you going to do right now? Why is this going to change? All legs. So I, I'm pretty much doing what I usually do. Uh, mine is picking things up. I can't grab things yet. Uh, but creation these days, I'm able to use straps and other things. I can just wrap around my shoulder, my elbow, and, and I get the get the movements and uh, everything I need. So. I'm pretty much back to everything. I'm not running. I'm not running. I can't run yet. The vibrations of the motion would alter it a little bit, but I'm doing some subtle jumping, um, light movement stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the way with not that many games left, and obviously, you said, you know, for Portland, I guess it's the priority. Yeah. What do you feel like, other than getting, obviously, like you started saying, Yeah. <laughs> I think playing consistently, you know, uh, regardless, I mean, obviously I wish I could play, but regardless of who's on the floor, even if KP isn't playing, we have to create that sense of consistency of how we're going to play, you know, of who, what our identity is and how, you know, we should just be able to plug in KP when he's ready and just take off from that because of how our system is and who we are, you know, so, um, I think it's a blessing in disguise too, because it grants Rui, it grants Danny, it grants Kuz, it grants Pope, it grants everybody a little bit more freedom to grow in a way um, on both ends of the floor. Uh, it gives guys bigger roles. Like Kuz has a bigger role now, and he's starting to realize how tough that role is. And he's doing well, and he's also saying that he may get double teamed. You know, he may start seeing, uh, you know, guys jam him more, force him to dribble, you know, and it's getting tougher. Um, so, I just think from just the depth standpoint, we're still there. We still have the depth at each position. Um, but it's obviously just a matter of, of, of making it work and putting it together. But 
I love the fact that Rui and Denny, they're getting a lot more freedom as young guys and Corey, uh, getting that freedom, getting that confidence that they need because they're going to need that in the playoffs, in those deep stretches, in those runs that we're going to have in the future. What do you want to do this offseason with uh, your on-court Mm-hmm. What are the areas you want to concentrate on with your skill set? Oh, man, you know I always say everything, but uh, obviously I need to shoot the three better. I think I'll that'll be a big focus for me. It's my three point shoot, uh, being more consistent for sure. I think that's it's gonna be a high area for me. Is uh, shoot a lot of threes, deep threes, off the dribble threes, uh, and be better at that. For sure, ball handling, always working on that, being better. Uh, everything, I always, you know me, I'm not, I'm not perfect. Nothing I do is perfect or great. So, I work on everything, shooting for sure. Obviously, you have a big offseason ahead. How does the fact that your season go for change affect the timeline? I mean, it's as crazy as it may sounds. Like, this is a blessing in disguise, too, like being out because I can see the team. I can see our young guys develop. I can see coach continue to develop, too. I can see us grow as a team. I don't have to rush to a decision. I don't have to rush to anything. Like, everything is just take it a day at a time. Just take everything at a day. Like, Shep, Ted, we're all good. You know, we, we know what the summer is. Um, and that's always been a straightforward communication between us and – I'm excited that I get to see our team. I get to see what we do in a draft. I get to see some preliminary free agent stuff that we may possibly do. So it's a uh, it's a great position to be in. I'm not I'm not mad at all. Today's uh, Kispert's birthday. Hey, what have you seen from his development from his first month to where he is now? He's a mature rookie. He was never like a rookie and like a deer in the headlights, like a young guy, like a lot of like me coming into the league. Um, he's very mature. He has the experience. He played in college a few years, you know, so he he came in with the understanding of how to play the game. You know, and I think it was funny. I was talking to, I think, AG the other day of just how well Corey has a grasp of cutting. He just understands timing of when it's when to cut, when not to cut, um, how to, you know, when guys penetrate, how to seep into the open gap for shots. He's always open. And, and I think his ability and his confidence to take those shots and knock them down as a rookie has been great. Uh, he's just going to continue to get better, you know, and I love the fact that he's – he can put the ball on the floor. He's athletic, sneaky athletic. He'll dunk you, you know. He he makes plays on, on the defensive end too. So uh, the sky's the limit for him, you know. And, again, I'm happy that he gets an opportunity too uh, to be able to grow in a role. Talking about how the next season everything this season? Uh, how well he's handled it because it's a lot. It's a lot. You're asking somebody to come in and basically turn around a franchise in a way, right? We, we, it's pretty much a whole new team, right? New coach, new system, new everything. You're asking him to come out and win at a high level. That's tough on a coach, on a first year coach. Like he's been around the league for a long time, but we all know that sitting in the first seat is totally different, you know? But he's handled it well. Like, he hasn't shown, at least to me or to the players, like he's given in to losses or he's given in to the adversity. He's never, he's never done that. He's never done that. And that's one thing I admire. You know, if, you, if your coach is, is willing to go through the fire and, and headstrong in it, you, your, your team is just going to follow right behind you, you know. Um, and he's confident in that. He leads by example. He's very vocal. Um, you know, he communicates – at a high level, he's very intelligent. Uh, but I, I'm very impressed with how well he's handled it, you know, the adversity, because we started out great. You know, a coach can very well get the big head. Yeah, we're doing this, that, and the third. You know, I've seen this, but, you know, he was very down to earth. He's like, you know, yeah, we got off to a good start, but adversity hits. And he's always big on, you know, our true character shows on how we deal with this and how we come out on the other side of it. So I have a huge respect for coach, for sure. And how he's handled the year. Great start, followed by mediocrity. How to make sense of it? I don't know if I can. Uh, 
but it is odd that it happened the way it did um, and frustrated on a lot of levels. You know, I think we we had a grand opportunity to really take it on the horns and, and really ride that and really ride the bull, you know, throughout the rest of the, the way. But we kind of let go a little bit, you know, um, whatever the case may be. And it was tough. I mean, granted, our situation, we try not to – I'm big on no – excuses um but you know it is we all seen it like it was tough to play the amount of guys we were playing it was tough to get everybody's rotations it was tough to get healthy guys back into the lineup it's tough to find those minutes you know and, and west trying to figure out who i am as a person as a player who spence is who coos is who you know gaff is he's trying to figure out everybody on the fly all while trying to get guys minutes all while trying to make everybody happy that is a tough job to do that's a tough environment to be in but we're not the only team that deals with that. That's, you know, it's the league. Um, but for us, is you know, it was, it was tough. It was definitely tough to be, especially a lot of, like, everybody wants to play. And I think that was uh, what I want everybody to know is that we all wanted to win. We all want to win, 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 win. You know, and I think sometimes, selfishly, we may do too much to try to do that. You know, sometimes we may hold the ball too long. You know, we may take a bad shot, but it's not uh, selfish like as an uh, F the players, F my teammates. It's a, I want to make, I want to win. I want to make a winning play. Uh, but we just couldn't put it together. You know, we, we, we allowed a lot of adversity to kind of hit us and we just, we couldn't fight out of it. We couldn't break through it, you know. Uh, and granted, after the break, I think there was kind of a sense of relief. Like, it's always tough around break. Everybody's tight. Everybody's, you don't know if you're going to be here or not. You know, I, I get it, you know. Um, but, you know, once you have – once the trade is done, it's done. You know, once deadline's done, it's done. You know, everybody kind of had a like a weight off their shoulders and they were ready to play. And we came out, won a few games, and we're in a position where now to still make a run, so. Sit back and evaluate and consider the future. What are, like, the most important factors? Is it, is it all on the court? Is there off the court that – What's most important to you? Uh, everything, for sure. Off the court, 100%. You know, what we do in the community as an organization is super important to me. Like, we live in Ward 8. Like, it's, it's crazy. The last, I don't have anything to do now, so I just, I'm on my computer all day researching. So, it is amazing to see what Ward 8 is going to do around here, what all of St. Elizabeth East is going to turn into. It is amazing what that will turn into. But... I really hope that we have a big part in influencing more people in Ward 8 to be able to get these jobs, to be able to live in these homes that are being built, these nice town homes that are getting built over here. Um, so in a lot of ways, that is, that plays a, a lot of it, plays a, a big factor into it too. You know, what we do as an organization, what stamp can we leave in the community? Um, what impact do we leave? Because it can just be window dressing to just be here and where they can just sit here and we're not doing anything about it. You know, we're not helping the people who live here. You know, it's great to have a facility here, but let's help them. Let's help. And I think we're doing, I think the city's doing mayor Bowser. She's doing an awesome job with what she's putting together, her vision, her plan. Like that is, is dope to see, but hopefully it comes to fruition how, how everybody thinks it should. But that plays a big part of it. And obviously winning, you know, having a winning environment, having a group of guys who are committed to winning, having a group of guys who are committed to, you know, buying into what coach wants, buying into, you know, what the organization needs. Um, and obviously I play a factor in that too. I have to be better. You know, I can't just throw everything in, all the eggs in their basket. I have to be better. Uh, but being around the group of guys and, who want to win and who will buy into what we need to do. That's important. Could your calculus change because you're not playing? Is it that actually does qualify for the playing tournament or ultimately like make the playoffs because you're not there and they end up doing something like that? I know before you were like, you're not a real big fan of like playing, but mm -hmm. if they do it without you, does that change your mindset? I mean, it kind of changed when I went out, honestly, because – I want to be out there. I want to be a part of the reason we make the plan. But I'm 100% pushing for us to still do so, you know. Um, 
Well, if I was playing, I hope we wouldn't be able to play it. My bad. Uh, but a hundred percent, like I'm still pushing for that. Like I'm pushing for my team, whatever it takes to get in the playoffs at this point, because I obviously know what I can do and how valuable I am to the team. But uh, it doesn't necessarily change change it. No, no, future wise, no, because. I want to make the. I always want to make the playoffs, you know. And I think we still have a team that can do something. Hundred percent. With the first game caliber, it's always going to be speculated. Six point games, and you know, how much you miss that? Solution six. Yeah. So it's better to just ask you. Like, are we getting pregnant? Do you have to say it? Want to? Times I'm here. I could, I could, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, it's a big summer. It's a big summer, and I'm excited for it. And to end time you are, too. We all are. It's a, it's a big summer. Um, I mean, it's, that's tough. I mean, it's, it's no knock on who we had. I mean, it just, it just didn't, you know, it just didn't work, you know, uh, because I've, I a hundred percent vouched for him to be here. So I'm not going to sit here and say it was always a bad move. No, no. Um, but you, it's tough. I mean, because we, we really, we have a, I guess, a void at the position, you know, um, but that's kind of the, that's that's what trades are for. That's what free agency is for. That's what the summer's for. You know, so there's been we we communicate that a lot, Tommy and I. We have that we have that mutual understanding of that's a need for us. And we look at the market, and there's a few guys that you know we we're considering, but you know we gotta make that push and you know to to make a deal done. So. What do you think of the release uh, brothers? I love it. He needs to shoot more. He needs to shoot more. We gotta find him. And he needs to shoot him. I know sometimes he probably may not be comfortable always. He probably feels like he's settling, but he's shooting 50 from out there, if I'm not mistaken, or close to it. Like, he's shooting lights out. Um, regardless of how many attempts he's shooting, he's shooting the ball really well. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to see his confidence. You know, he's – every game I feel like he's gotten better. You know, he's not – doing anything out of ordinary. He plays hard. He does his job. And he competes. You know, that's, that's all you can always ask out of Rui. But we need him to continue to grow, continue to get better. You know, take that next stride and shoot more threes, taking his guys off the dribble if he has to mismatch. Uh, you know, the game is slowed down for him more and more, for sure. But I'm happy to see his confidence at, at the level it is, for sure. Did you know, passing towards, I guess, before you a little bit, not much. Um, just only when he, you know we play him when he was with the Knicks, um, then a few times in Dallas. But see him, I know he he'd be tough. He's a tough guard, you know. Just he's very tough to guard, you know. He's very ill. You know, he's seven four, can block. I mean, he's a rim protector. Alter shots at the rim anyway. And it just is. I'm excited, you know. He is very – he's a unicorn. I mean, we call him a unicorn, but he's, he's definitely – he's unique in a lot of ways. You know, I'm excited to – so I'm excited to see him on the floor, you know, uh, for sure. But he could be special. He could be special. All right, Brad, let's move over to Zoom for just a few questions. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Brad, uh, first off, glad the surgery went well. When Tommy laid out, you know, the plan to you before you had the surgery, did you have any idea that Porzingis was going to be an opportunity or was that a complete shock? Uh, he mentioned it um, earlier in the week, but I didn't, I didn't know if it had legs on it. You know, I didn't know if it was, you know, it's real serious. Uh, it was just kind of a name. You know, we were obviously, we looked at Porzingis. I mean, not Porzingis. 
We looked at Sabonis. We looked at uh, a few other guys. But then once that that domino fell, he he made he made a executive. You know, he he did what was best for the organization, and uh, he made it happen. How I have no idea, but he got it done. You know, I woke up and we had a couple new guys on the team. So it was crazy. And, you know, I know you said, you know, you're going to take the summer, think about things, but, you know, you're talking about the future, Kuzma, Porzingis, Gafford, you know, you said, you know, as far as I know, you know, I'm here. Is it fair to say that, you know, you're leaning towards resigning? It's fair. It's fair. And then, okay, and then last thing, um, you know, Kuz is now in a role where, you know, he sees those double teams that, you know, you're very used to, what do you think that you can maybe, you know, provide to him or, you know, anybody else on the team as advice as they keep going the rest of the season? It's not going to get easier, but understand that, you know, understand the position he's in. Um, I'm obviously going to, it's tough because we play a little bit different positions. He's a forward, I'm a guard. So a lot of times he may get doubled in the post. He may get doubled, you know, on the block or, especially if he comes off ball screens. But the biggest thing is to stay aggressive. Stay aggressive at all times. Continue to put as much pressure on the defense as you can. You know, don't just accept double teams. Don't accept traps. Don't accept, um, you know, how they guard you. You know, kind of get what you want, uh, whether that's getting in the paint or getting, you know, creating yourself a shot, um, you know, and understanding you can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself, you know. Um, I think those are two biggest things for sure. Thanks, Brad. We'll go to Takashi. Takashi, you there? Oh, yes. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello, Brad. My name is Takeshi Shibata from Tokyo, Japan. My man. Uh, very nice to meet you. Pleasure. Uh, uh, so my question is about uh, Rui Hachimura's uh, three-point shooting again. And uh, what do you like mechanically about his shooting? Uh, he's especially, you know, you know, improving from the from beyond the arc. So what do you like? Like, uh, you know, lower body uh, stroke or uh, even the follow through or something? Do, what do you think? Uh, he has a smooth shot. It's all one motion. You know, I think that's a, a beauty in shooting, you know, uh, limiting. Um, unnecessary movements in your shot. You know, Rui has a very fluid shot and, uh, and he holds his follow through. That's what I love the most. You hold your follow through. Uh, you're able to kind of understand why you make him his shots, you know. Uh, and he had he just has an unbelievable feel and confidence right now. Uh, you know, the hoop, hoop looks like an ocean and he's just chucking little stones in there. Uh, you know, it's just kind of, that's just where he is, you know. And uh, his mechanics are great. You know, I love the fact he has a wide base. Um, you know, he shoots above his head and he holds his follow through, you know, and the biggest thing that goes into shooting is confidence, you know, and he's confident in shooting, you know, obviously we want him to shoot more and more and more, uh, but he's, he's confident in, in his shot and he's taking it. Uh, did you, did you give any advice to him about the shooting? Me? No, no honestly, um, he came in ready to go, you know, um, from the first time he practiced, he was pretty much he's pretty much shooting this way, you know. Um, so, you know, that's definitely a testament to the work he's put in uh, while he was out, uh, how serious he took it, you know, just kind of his mindset now. You know, he's coming in with a lot of confidence, playing well, and doing everything we needed him to do. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will finish up with Christos. Hey, Brad. Hope you're doing well, first of all. Uh, how important for you at this stage of the season with 21 games uh, until the end of the regular season, how important is to be around the team more and more as the games goes on? Mm -hmm. It's important um, for sure because uh, given my perspective from, you know, watching on the sidelines or, you know, being at home and watching it on TV, like it's important to give that insight to our team. We have a bunch of young guys. Like we have young guys who can play who are talented and who want to learn. Like, TB hits me up all the time about what he can do better after every game. And he's always been like that since he first got here. And 
it's, it's, it's so cool to be in that role now to help guys. Um, but it's always important for me to be around. I have to, you know, it's educate me more. Um, and I don't know everything about the game. I'm still, there's still stuff I'm learning and I can be better at, you know, so obviously just constantly learning, you know, pushing guys, encouraging guys, uh, and, you know, giving my perspective of what I see, you know, and what they can do and what they should probably try to avoid. But all in all, the biggest goal is, is helping this team win. You know, how can I help win? Even if I'm out, how can I help the team win? That's, that's being around. And all those weeks that you are set out, how, what are your thoughts? How you prepare yourself for the next off season and the next season as well? How you prepare yourself for it? Well, I always, I always take a break. I always let my body rest after the end of the year. Um, just allow it to relax, let your muscles calm down. Your adrenaline's been going all year. Just, you know, take some time off, you know, and then uh, always evaluate my year, you know, what I think I did well, where I can be better. And then I always put a plan together in the summer, you know, of how I'm going to tackle, you know, the things I was good at, continue to improve them and, you know, the things I want to be better at or what I want to add to my game and really drill that every single day, you know, for the summer. And uh, it's, it's, it's always been the process. You know, I get with Drew, I get with my guy Ben in LA and uh, I go to work. We put together a good game plan of, you know, what we want to do, what we want to be better at, you know, set goals for the summer and be ready to hit it full steam come September, October. Thank you very much. Get that stronger and hungrier than ever. No, I guess so. All set, Brad. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. What's the latest on Chris Haskins' way back? Well, you know, he had another positive day. Um, he did a little bit more um, in the one-on-one stuff. Uh, jumped in a little bit in the in the five-on-five. I mean, I don't want to jump ahead of myself in that. I think he's just eager and itching to get out there. Um, You know, he wants to get up to speed as quickly as possible. And it's just tough to do in a one-on-o type setting. Uh, he doesn't have complete clearance to do that, but <laughs> he's feeling comfortable today. So it's good. You know, it's a good sign to get a little taste of it. Um, and we'll see once again how he responds and we'll progress. Well, I mean, I, I want to be careful and say push. I mean, I think it's important that he he get back up up to speed and get healthy. That's that's the biggest uh, piece of it. But we want to see what it looks like. And I think on paper you have some ideas and in your mind the the you know how it's supposed to look. You want to see it in action. Um, he he add his talent, his skill set, and abilities that, that adds another dimension for us. Um, and, and I think it'll be really good for us spatially. It, it'll add to our depth from the three point line. All those things we, you know, we think we know, but how does it fit? You know, and there's no real way to see it, you know, without Brad out there. But I think it's a it's a great problem to have. And knowing that, you know, at some point he's going to be right. Uh, we'll get Brad back and, you know, I think we'll, we'll be uh, in really good shape. But, um, you know, the sooner we can get him out there and, and get him healthy, I think it's the most important thing. I don't, I don't think it'll disrupt anything. Um, I think it uh, will enhance what we have, um, you know, with his ability to play the four and the five gives us, you know, depth of both positions, um, you know, allows us to bump down, you know, you play Denny and Kyle, you know, at the three some. So it's just like the, there's flexibility in that. I don't think you lose a whole lot. I think you have just nothing but upside. I'm not even thinking about, you know, that being the biggest dynamic. Um, uh, I know we've struggled a bit. We've played better at times, you know, uh, you know, we've had two decent games and coming out of the break didn't go our way, you know, and I think, you know, can we build a little bit 
more momentum, uh, you know, coming off a win. Can we continue to sustain our play? Um, they, they are a matchup problem, you know, with, with Trey Young being the dynamic player that he is. They've got a lot of shooting on the floor. They have dynamic rollers, you know, whether it's Capella, Co Collins, if he's available, you know, those are matchup problems. Uh, so I'm not thinking down the road at this being a, you know, potential postseason matchup. It's, it's, it's the next game in front of us, and that's the, uh, uh, the way we have to kind of target it, nothing more. Um, we we want to worry about us and play just the schedule as it, you know, unfolds. How long was Chris playing the final time? Uh, it was, it was sporadic possessions. No, no long duration. Uh, he did stay after and, and did a little bit more of the, the one V one stuff. So, you know, I think he's trying to push himself and see how he responds, but there's no, um, there's still no definitive timetable from our perspective. It's, you know, day to day and see where he goes, see how he feels, um, whether we back down or ramp up uh, depends on, you know, how he responds. What was it like uh, having him out there and matching him with lineups and just having this unique player that, you know, you figure you're ready to have? Well, you know, we, you know you're going to keep it really simple, but he's just trying to get a feel for what we're doing. It's it's not like, you know, we're going to go right to, to him and, and play through him or do anything to make him feel uncomfortable. He wants to get his legs under him. He wants to move and feel a little contact, uh, understand our terminology, our spacing, get co more comfortable with the, the offense. So uh, in a nutshell, it's just good to see him out there, you know, with those constraints, but uh, we're not putting anything on it, you know, or reading anything into it. It's just, uh, you know, he was able to do a little bit more today, and that's a good sign. Yes. No, he was a full participant today, so I think he's fine. All right, Coach, we'll take a couple questions from Zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Coach, um, is the 5-on-5, five five, you think, sporadic possessions, is that technically contact for KP? I don't know how they would judge it otherwise, but yeah, there was some contact, uh, it was just half court possessions, um, you know, so there's a little bit of contact, but you know, it, it's more than he's done to date. So I, like I said, it's a good sign. I'm not reading into anything or saying that's going to be the norm, but um, having him out there was good. And then it seemed like you mentioned that there are still additional things that he's yet to be cleared for. What are some of those things? Uh, those are, you know, things that the medical team is looking to have. I, I don't want to get into that. Um, but, you know, once again, to have him do a little bit more every day is a positive step in the right direction. Um, and we have to just see how he responds. I guess uh, for Corey's birthday, did he have to sing to himself? <laughs> uh, it, no one had to sing to him, but uh, there, there were cupcakes available. So I think everybody's happy. Thanks, Coach. And we'll finish up with Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. For you personally, how important is to have Bradley Bill around the team, share his leadership, and help with him off the floor with his presence? I think it's huge for this group. You know, I think a lot of times when guys get hurt or, you know, they feel the, detached or not involved, but to, for him to be around, to travel with us, um, you know, to be on the bench, you still not only sense his presence, but you, you have his voice. Uh, you know, he's building guys up, he's correcting, he's teaching, uh, you know, he's helping along. He's doing the best he can with, you know, what limitations, you know, he's, he's set under. So um, I think it's great for him. It's, it's great leadership that, that he's willing to, you know, to continue to be, be in the fold and be, be present. You know, I think it means uh, a lot to our young guys. And as we kind of build this thing and, you know, he's not necessarily on the floor, but he's still a big part of what we're doing. And also the way that you closed the game out against the Pistons in the last three minutes, how encouraging was that for you? And how important to take that momentum of that win and that effort in the last three minutes for the game against the Hawks? What we would like to do to maintain that effort? Well, I mean, the effort, I think, has been rather consistent. Um, you know, that, that over the last probably 10 games has been great. It's, uh, you know, cutting down on some of the mistakes, you know, some of the areas that we've seen slippage. Um, you know, take care of the defensive boards, take care of the ball, make sure we, you know, get those turnovers down. 
Um, but the overall effort, I think, has been great. Um, I think late game execution um, w- was solid the other night. You know, we saw some slippage, you know, against the Spurs. But, um, you know, we're going to find ourselves in a lot of these tight games. So we, we got to find ways through film, clean up, walkthroughs, um, you know, to put our guys in these situations and drill it. Um, I think it's easy in the fly, on the fly or in the timeout to say certain things and draw certain things. But if there's not a comfortability with uh, the timing of it or, uh, you know, the speed of it, and there's really no way to simulate the, that environment, you know, where, where your adrenaline's going and the crowd's going, it's a crunch time situation. Can we get carryover? and, you know, minimize some of the mistakes that we've seen. So the energy, the effort, the connectivity, I love. I want to stay, stay right there where we are, just clean up some of the minor things that, um, you know, have slipped a bit. Thank you very much, Coach. All right, Coach, that is it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.